Hello and welcome to an AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. We're going to address basic drilling fluid concepts in the hopes that we can help you tackle far more complex problems in the future. Electrical stability is a key reading whenever we are running oil or synthetic based drilling fluids. It's typically associated with the relative stability of the emulsion. A lot of people have questions about what electrical stability is and what's an appropriate value. Nobody wants to see an unstable emulsion where the mud flips or becomes extremely thick and unusable. It's really expensive and usually associated with something like taking a water flow or where material in the mud has become water wet and it destabilizes the emulsion. In principle, the electrical stability or ES is used as an indicator of emulsion stability. The idea is that a stable emulsion is minimally conductive, so it'll take significant voltage for current to bridge across two electrodes spaced at a fixed distance apart. An electrical stability reading is taken by increasing the voltage until that current is detected. What's actually happening in the mud is that water droplets are forming a bridge between the two electrodes in the probe. The first ES meter design was actually proposed in 1958 by a gentleman named B.C. Crittenden. Here's the patent if you want to read more on that. The first ES meters in common use featured a knob with an LED. You turn the knob to increase the voltage and at the end point when that current was detected, an LED would light up. There were a number of issues with these testers and anyone who has used one can tell you about them. The electronics in the meters were quite rudimentary and used what's called a square wave oscillator. This produced some pretty spiky inputs and that made the results highly inconsistent. Uh, one issue was that solids could build up on one side of the probe, uh, creating some very erratic values. Another issue was that the increase in voltage was subject to the rate the knob turns. Combine that with older emulsifier technology and the introduction of mineral oils, which presented completely different ES values, and a good mud engineer would just make sure the reading was as high as possible to avoid any of those unstable events. Even back then, the API stated results should be within 5%. Studies performed at the time showed that this only took place about half the time, even with the same user using the same instrument. Um, so even back then, consistency was a huge issue. Ultimately, they did update the equipment, and that's the newer type ES meters we see today. The oscillator uses a smoother sinusoidal waveform and the voltage is automatically raised at a consistent rate to get a good reading. The new level of consistency offers far more reliable data. And in fact, the API states that readings with the new meter could be as low as half of a reading that you would have gotten on one of the older models. So what does this mean for our ES values? Well, there are some pretty specific directives from the API on this one. Specifically, it says not to look at absolute numbers and to follow trends. In fact, this has always been the recommendation, it's just been very difficult to monitor a trend with the equipment available. This makes a lot of sense because we know different base oils, weight materials, oil water ratios, and the shear history of a fluid can have a significant impact on the readings. The fact is, if an emulsion is becoming unstable, we can expect to see not only a drop in ES, but water in the filtrate of our HPHT test, increase in viscosity, and also a visual dulling of the mud. It's important to treat whenever you see signs of instability and to maintain your trends, but overtreating may never get you to a specific value and introduces unnecessary cost. Modern emulsifiers are extremely stable and may not even be able to achieve a high ES number, but they are plenty robust and far more stable than the older chemistry we used to use. So next time someone asks for a really high ES number, Remember to save your money and just follow those trends. That concludes this AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. Stay tuned for the next one, and if you want to learn more, have a listen to the Flowline, our podcast. And if you want to improve your drilling fluid performance, reach out to us at AES Drilling Fluids, where better fluids equal better wells.